makes me cringe. There's a, it's a great way to get injured. This reaction video sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. This video is titled, How to Build a Long Privacy Fence, The Handyman, from The Handyman Channel. As always, if you'd like to watch this video in its entirety without the commentary, we will link it in the description below. Now, I've got to build another fence. And it's not going to be a fun one because it's behind all, all these bushes here. But I built that one, I would say three years ago. And this homeowner uh, has been staining and, and keeping up with the fence so that it doesn't end up looking like that one. That is a, uh, a good point to make in that if you do use a quality stain and sealant to treat your fence, uh, it will prolong the life and it'll keep it looking nicer. It's a little bit more work to maintain the fence, but for what fence costs nowadays to build, it makes sense to try to take care of it. Yeah, so it's not gonna be fun. An interesting uh, entrance method to the side yard. Today, the goal is to remove this old fence, which is about a hundred feet, about a hundred feet long. This fence looks like it was stained at one time, but uh, it's not wearing very well. So it's not going too bad. Got my first, oh, six, seven foot section of fence removed. And just gonna keep on going. It's interesting that he cut that one section into two pieces, probably because he's by himself. It, makes, it would probably make them easier to carry. Fence come down a lot, uh, a lot faster. It'd be easier to dispose of if they were in full sections. I've got 50 inches between the wheel wells of my truck. So I'm trying to get as much in there Okay, so that explains the uh, shorter sections. If he was using a trailer, obviously, he could just use uh, entire, you could take them off entire panel by panel. Now that the truck is filled up above the wheel wells, I can start taking 60 inch panels. That'll fit through the tailgate and we can maximize how much we can take out of here today. Post was just rotted off completely. Got lucky. I had a uh, barbed, whatever that is, coupler and two stainless steel hose, clamp, hose clamps. Any fencing contractor that's built fence for any length of time knows it's always a good idea to keep a irrigation repair kit in the truck. I understand a lot of contracts out there state that the contractor is not liable for unmarked utilities, private utilities, which irrigation falls in that realm. Ours has that stipulation. However, if it's a nick and it's easier to fix it than to try to hassle with letting the customer know it's their responsibility, you fix it and move on. So there is a hundred foot long, six foot tall, rotten privacy fence all in the bed of this truck. So we're squatting a little low. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I um, air up my airbags. Hmm. It's a neat trick. I'd, I'd guess the truck's probably a half ton or something like that. So uh, add a little bit Instant more lift capacity kit. to it. I do not miss trips to the dumper transfer station. Um, it seems like you always end up with a flat tire every other trip. This place is nasty. I usually wear a mask, but I forgot it at, at home. I'm gonna start building a fence today and 
One thing I want to point out is I can't use, or the reason why I can't use any sort of power auger. Um, getting one down through here, I guess you could do it, but it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Getting it in and around all these bushes isn't going to work out very well. That landscaping would be an absolute problem to try to bring a, a mini skid or any sort of digging attachment down through there so I, I would hope that he had priced that accordingly knowing it's going to take him significantly longer to dig those holes uh, since he's going to have to dig them by hand also building against landscaping like that you can absolutely plan on uh, hitting hitting roots and even if it's not rocky soil it'll just take significantly longer to dig by hand than it would using a uh, digging machine building a fence is extremely easy the only thing that takes much skill, and I think it just takes more patience than anything, is to set the posts in a straight line. So setting the posts in a straight line does take, you know, a, a bit of attention to detail and a bit of time. As long as you take your time, it should be fine. Um, I would argue there's more skill to install the fencing correctly on the post uh, than there is to set the post. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I actually just threw away a piece of this that I had bought the other day to do a different one. <sighs> All right. Got to get that fixed. Sounds like you struggled with that a little bit. So he's wet setting uh, the post. He's he's pre-mixing the concrete, putting in the hole. That way he's sure of the consistency. Uh, there are differing opinions on uh, whether to whether to dry set or wet set. Let me know your thoughts on that subject in the comments below. Please keep them civil. I'm hoping he's using more than one screw per 2 before connection. The standard would be two. We got all of our fence pickets laid out and the fence rails and posts have been stained. Generally a good idea to stain it before installation. That way you can get all the nooks and crannies. Uh, now it would have been a little bit nicer if the 2 before and posts had been stained prior to him installing them, but it's still, it's still good to have it stained before, uh, before you bring the material on site or before you finish the fence rather. It's kind of funny, one neighbor decided to stain his side before I put it up, and the other neighbor is going to stain his after I put it up. Obviously it looks like a water-based stain because it didn't penetrate through the wood. We recommend oil-based stains. Uh, we prefer expert professional wood care products. Uh, they penetrate really nicely. It's a good oil-based stain. Um, like I said, the way you know is this didn't penetrate at all. I mean, it looks like it's just a surface coat. So once that surface coat degrades with UV exposure, then, um, then it's going to just expose that entire picket back to the elements. So here is where I've started. And I only do a certain oh, length of fence pickets at a time because you can get a little droop in your, your string. So this is about 10 foot section. And then I'll move the string down. I think that's the first time I've seen a moving string. I've seen moving jigs, uh, so a jig that, that typically spans about half a section at a time for that exact reason, so that it follows the terrain of the 2 by 4 nicely. Never seen a moving string line before, though. I've just about got all the pickets screwed to the fence, and it's time to make a gate. The customers requested that I build the new gate exactly the same as the old gate was built, and they even want me to use the the old hinges and gate latch. I would recommend using new hinges and latches. It'll just make it that much better of a fence. Reusing hardware doesn't make a lot of sense. 
typically you would want to build the gate on the fence and just to make sure that everything lines up really nicely so it doesn't look like the gate was bolted on as an afterthought. I understand using this one as a template, but you might be taking the build my gate exactly like the old one a little bit too far. I got everything cut out. Now I'm just going to use these three inch screws right here and uh, see if I can screw these angled pieces together, something like this. And then go from there. See how I, I don't think this gate works until all the pickets are actually attached. It's interesting to see him use adhesive as in addition to screws. I mean, it it probably is a little bit of peace of mind. It might be overkill. I'm not sure why you would freehand rip this on a table saw when it literally has a fence installed on the table saw. That's what those are for. Uh, the hand closest. Uh, this makes me cringe. There's a. Uh, it's a great way to get injured. I mean, he had room there to make the gate a little bit larger so that it took an entire picket rather than uh, cutting a picket or splitting a picket. It's confusing that the customer wanted to reuse the hardware. That hardware set, it's probably $20 for the hinges, 15 for the latch maybe. Strange place to try to try to pinch pennies. How do you open that gate from the outside? No, oh, okay. So the handle itself has a has a thumb depression on it. Well guys, that's it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, what you would do differently, or what you agree with. I always in enjoy interacting with you guys uh, in the comments. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.